you have an interesting month coming up in October 2015. And this forecast will work if you have a Pisces sun sign or if you have Pisces ascendant. So both of you can benefit from this forecast. Now for everyone, October 2015 is possibly the best month of the year. I am starting though with the new moon, which is the more organic way to start a month anyway, but it just so happens to break down that way. Um, in this case, here's my calendar of the month. You can see that these dates in red, which is the beginning of the month, are, well, red means challenging, and then the green means go. So that's just the cliff notes here. But one of the reasons that October in the beginning is so challenging is because Mercury is still in retrograde. And in your case, you are working through painstakingly some of the collaborations, business and troubleshooting that you have to do normally, but now double, double, double troubleshooting, it's kind of a tongue twister in terms of Mercury retrograde. And that started on September 17th. Now, just to make things even more interesting, you're meeting all kinds of new people because you have all this seventh house activity. So in this case, Mars is forming opposition to Neptune. Neptune in your first house is making you even more of what you already are, more glamorous, more sensitive, more spiritual, more mystical. And this has been going on for quite some time, depending on when your exact birthday is. But um, Mars forming opposition and a whole lot of other planets in your seventh house are forcing you to be more social, forcing you to have a more public persona, which you know could be a mixed blessing. So you do have to protect yourself and seal yourself off from negative influences. And you know, you can learn how to do that. There, you know, there's all kinds of theory and practice involved with psychic self-defense. And I think that's the kind of subject you want to pursue here, particularly first week of October. Now to make it even richer, the um, October 4th through 9th, the sun is forming squared to Pluto. Now, Pluto in your 11th house means you know a lot of really powerful people. Your friends are either wealthy or they're politically influential. They're all going through changes all the time. They've got OCD, so that's why they need you to tell them, you know, give them the sage advice, right? Now, in this case, because Pisces are known to have that magic sage-like quality. Um, now, in this case, back to October 4th through 9th, the sun is moving through your eighth house. So you are really focused on business, but meanwhile, your friends really want your attention. And you know, so you're kind of torn between taking care of your own business and helping your friends, which because they're rich and powerful, they could bring you more business. So it's just, so you may have to work in your, uh, your hours um, you know, on the slide because your friends are gonna need a lot of your attention. That's how it is. October 6th through 16th, this is looking a little better. Jupiter trying Pluto. And so here, now Jupiter in your seventh house is very good. And you know, even in your close, close relationships, they might be having good luck in their life. And so that's really positive. Also, you're just in general, your social life and public persona is developing nicely. So this is very good. And your friends seem to be able to work in the mix a little bit easier here at this point. October 9th, Mercury goes back to prograde motion so that a lot of these collaborations, business troubleshooting are now making more sense. They're easier to execute. October 12th is the new moon. It's going to be conjunct the star Spica, which is the shaft of wheat held by the agricultural goddess. The actual time span, the whole time window of the new moon phase is the 10th through 14th. And during this time, you, you know, everyone on a new moon, it's a tabula rasa. It's a, it's a open, it's a blank slate. So it can be open, receptive expectant, but also a little anxious, a um, little introverted, but um, really you can move forward on some of your collaborations and get things to work. Because it's conjunct the star Spica, some of the really interesting players, at least I think they're interesting, science, agriculture, philosophy, culture, music, and art, issues of hope versus cynicism. So I mean, really just a full house here of interesting, um, profound topics. Um, it's up to you to decide if you think that's profound or not. But um, the experiences that you had earlier in October, we all learned from these, um, whether they were minor scandals, betrayals, or distractions, built our character, hopefully built our character, or our concentration, or our emotional discipline. So now, we, as a re, as a, now our reward is we can get more involved with cultural science and justice. These arenas are gonna provide a very interesting, good life for us, and in your case, collaborations, contracts, troubleshooting, it's like you're wiser, you know, you have more um, attunement to what's really going to um, going to work out as a strategy. Now this new is, is particularly interesting because there's an opposition to Uranus. So there's many surprises, new teams could be really manic. 
So in your case, Uranus in your second house, so you, you've been either collecting all kinds of futuristic things or you are reinventing the whole idea of survival, of what materials and tools are. Maybe, maybe you're um, stocking up on high technology equipment. Okay, these are all great things. Or maybe you have a whole new sense of aesthetics, you know, way ahead of everyone else. That's pretty cool. Um, the, um, the next thing we're looking at here is October 14th through 20th. Mars conjunct Jupiter. Now, this is a great sense of enterprise. It's the beginning of a whole new phase, progressive phase. Um, my advice is use engineering skills, design talent to produce remedies or encourage your partners to do this because in this case, Mars conjunct Jupiter is in your house of partnerships. So this could be a whole new social life, public persona. You might be the person that is encouraging other people. You get luck through other people. So it's, it's highly reciprocal that the more you invest in other people, the more they're helping you. And that's kind of a similar theme to your Pluto in the 11th house, all these rich and powerful friends. Now these are rich and powerful close up um, then Venus conjuncts Jupiter in your seventh house. So this could be the bright lights are uniting to bring joy and celebration for you in terms of your partners are doing really well, your social life is developing, your public persona, you know, you're really popular. Remember like in high school when you were popular? This is really like high school kids, it's pretty cool. So uh, the full moon in your third house is kind of more of the same sort of thing, social like meetings, visiting, hosting. Um, a, a lot of a media development skill. So on the full moon, you can expect a lot of drama, important partnerships, which has already been a theme for the month anyway, rich social life, all these kinds of things. But in this case, maybe you really organized, chopped up into pieces of meeting, you know, accomplishing things, and, and just really being aware of how proximity-based link, based links, that is people close to you, either in work or in where you live, can, you can mutually benefit. Now, let me tell you about some of the constellations and, and celestial objects this full moon is close to because I think this could be really important. Uh, first, Andromeda Galaxy is um, inviting us to expand our community views outside the box thinking. So in meetings, you may be an agent for just a whole new idea. Hey guys, let's just turn it around, turn it upside down. Why are we limited? So you could do that and be uh, really uh, very useful. Also, um, um, it's, the full moon is near the triangular constellation, so interest in geometry, architecture, or justice-oriented types of activities. Always a good thing to bring into meetings because people get caught up in their own little, you know, their own focus. And so to, to be, uh, to say, open up into, you know, wider sense of justice is always a good thing. And then in a biological sense, to feel the pulse of life, like the, the barometer of, you know, how is it, how is everybody really feeling, you know, you're really aware of it instead of thinking, you know, to promote your agenda or any particular agenda, to just kind of sense it, you know, what's really going on here so that maybe you can paint a picture. And, um, and I'm not sure exactly the, the, how this would fit into the patterns and systems, well, certainly networks because meetings and, uh, involve Oh, or your media skill set could very much involve networks. So you may have a whole new idea about your internet identity or your presentation, how that fits. And, um, and maybe meetings could also take on a theme. You know, you want to seek out um, themes of your own uh, national uh, interests or your, um, your roots or cultural heritage. Those are great themes for a meeting and very satisfying. And, you know, in a multicultural society, really good to appreciate where you came from but overall just a great month huge conglomerates positive things november is a whole different thing november is going to be a kind of period of stoicism and sacrifice we will all have to toughen up but not to the point of self-destruction and anyway um, but ultimately maximize your benefits in october is my message because november we all have to be on guard and stay cool but in october we can really just go for it so I'm wishing you great success. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Victoria Martin. Very good.